Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Maison African Motives, still working on industrial electronics N2. So in this platform, we shall be focusing on the patent paper, which was written in April 2021, uh, working on AC theory. So we had the first question, uh, which is actually question three, 3.1, convey the following uh, radians to degrees. So we are given that these angles that we see, they are in radians, convert them to degrees. So this one was a simple conversion since we know that a pi is equivalent to 180 degrees. So if it is like that, therefore you just need to substitute in terms, in place of pi, just substitute 180. So this one was supposed to be two times 180 degrees over three of which it's your calculator guys. You can just use your calculator direct. That's uh, two times 180 over three. Uh, which is two by 180, whatever that we get, we divide by three, which is 120. So this is 120. The same thing here, three pi, that's three times 180 over four. So you have got three times 180 degrees, uh, whatever that we have here, we divide by four, which is going to be 135 degrees. So this was going to be 135 degrees. Same thing on five pi, over four, so it's five times 180 over four. So we've got five here. Five times 180 over four, which is 225. So it was going to be 225 degrees. So that's it guys, we've got three marks for that. Uh, let's see the second part of this question. We are given a sketch that we are supposed to study from that sketch that we have. Uh, from this sketch, we can check the values that we have. We've got XL, we've got uh, XC, uh, and we we checking on the values, you can see that our XL in this case is greater than XC. So it's in favor of the inductance. Uh, that is what we have in this case, which is XL minus XC. Okay, so from this diagram, everything is there. Calculate the following. If the supply voltage is 250, the frequency is 50 hertz, the value of the inductor in milli Henry. So you're given your answer is supposed to be in milli Henry's. Okay, so what can we do? We have got uh, XL, so we can take advantage of uh, XL. So this is 3.21. So we can take advantage of XL since we know that uh, XL is equivalent to two pi FL. So to find L, just have to divide by two pi F four sides by two pi F four sides. So that means the inductance is equal to XL over two pi F of which XL we are given XL, we have got XL, which is 39,25, everything over two pi times the frequency of which the frequency is given as 50 Hertz. So we're going to multiply by 50 uh, in this case. All right, so that's our inductance. Let's see from our calculator what we are going to obtain 39,25 over two pi times 50, so it's two pi times 50 degrees, we are going to obtain zero comma, whatever that we have. But since we are given an instruction to convert our answer to milli Henry's, I always say, whenever you convert to milli Henry's, you know that milli means times 10 to the power minus three. So you multiply by the opposite of minus three, which is times 10 to the power of positive three. So whatever that we have here, just multiply by 10 to the power of three. Your answer will be automatically in milli Henry's. So we are going to obtain 124,937. So that's 124,937 now in milli Henry's. So this is, a, uh, that was the typical part or you can convert, right? Yes, 125 milli depends with how you're going to round off or you can just leave your answer like that. Okay, the 3.22, the value of the capacitor in microfarads. So as you can see, also we have got XC here. So it can help us to find uh, the value of the capacitance. Why? Because we know that our XC is equivalent to one over two pi FC. And that means C is equal to one over two pi FXC by making C to be the subject of the formula. So we can actually substitute our values so here, everything is there. The capacity, the reactance is there. So it's two pi times the frequency of 50. It's times XC, 
which is 31,831. So we've got 31,831 like that. Okay, so let's see what we are going to have as the capacitance from our calculator. Take note, your answer is needed in microfarads. Micro meaning times 10 to the power minus six. So to convert to micro, you multiply by 10 to the power of six, the answer that you are going to get. Okay, so this is it. Uh, we have got one over two pi. So this is one over two pi times 50 times 31,831, which is going to give us 9,99, 9, 9, whatever that we have times 10 to the exponent of negative five. So if we multiply by 10 to the power of six, we are now converting to microfarads, which is 99,99. If we round off this nine, is going to be 10, 10. So it's going to be 100. So we're going to remain with a 100. So it's 100 microfarads. So now we have got 100 uh, microfarads. So that is the capacitance. So as I was saying that whenever you are converting to microfarads, you multiply by the opposite which is times 10 to the power of minus six. So that is 10 to the power of six, not minus six, but 10 to the power six. You are automatically converting to microfarads. So this one is now in uh, microfarads. Uh, Let's check the other part of the question, which is 3.23. So on 3.23, we are now given to calculate the impedance of the circuit, which is Z. So let's see what we have from the information. How can we obtain the impedance? We have got uh, XL, we have got XCC, we have got resistance, and we cross-checked here. We saw that XL is greater than XC. So the impedance definitely is going to be in favor of XL. So Z is going to be the phase sum of R squared plus XL minus XC squared, since XL is greater than that one. So our Z is going to be the square root of resistance, which is eight. So we've got eight squared plus XL minus XC. So XL, we have got 39,25 minus uh, 31,831, everything squared. So that's what we are going to have in this case. So we've got the impedance of the circuit. So let's see from our calculator, the square root of uh, eight squared. So that's eight squared plus 39,25. So this is 39,25 minus 31,831 squared. So this is what you're going to have, which is 10,9106, of which you can round off is going to be nine uh, one one because this six is going to change zero into one. So it's going to be 10,911 comma nine one one ohms. So that is the total impedance of the given uh, circuit. Let's check the other part of the question, which is 3.24. That is the supply current. Uh, in this case, we know that we are given uh, the supply voltage. We are already having this supply voltage of 250 volts. So the supply current is just going to be voltage over the total impedance. Total voltage over total impedance. The total voltage is 250 volts over the total impedance. We just calculated that one, which is 10,11. All right, so let's see. Our current is going to be what 250 divided by 10,911. We are going to have 22,912, which is 22,913. So we're going to have 22,913 amps. So that is the total current uh, in the circuit. All right, so the other part was the phase angle. So for the phase angle, for you not to be mistaken, the best uh, way for you to calculate the phase angle is to use the formulas uh, from your formula sheet. I want you to see something here. They already gave us a nice formula for the phase angle in terms of uh, impedance and uh, in terms of resistance and impedance, which is theta is R cos R over Z. This is the best uh, formula for you to use. Uh, if you do not want to have any mistakes in exam, just use that formula uh, for the phase angle. So in this case, that's the formula that I'm going to use since we have got the resistance and we also have uh, the impedance. So this is 3.24. So 
So on 3.25, sorry, our theta is going to be arc cos the resistance over the impedance. It's a nice formula, this one, and you won't go wrong. So arc cos R over Z, that is the resistance over the impedance. The resistance, we have got eight ohms. So we are going to have eight ohms. That's eight over the impedance, which is 10, 911. All right, so that's it. We can have uh, the phase angle. So from our calculator, we can uh, simplify shift cos eight divided by 10, 911. This can actually automatically gives us the value, which is 42,844. So this is 42,844 in degrees. So that was uh, the phase angle from that information. Yes, we can use uh, any other formula, but this is the best formula so that you do not waste much time calculating other values. Okay, the 3.3, now they're asking you to draw the circuit diagram for the sketch in fig two. Uh, the fig two that we see here is actually showing us that we had an inductor from this XL. There was an inductor, there was a resistor, there was a capacitor in series. So that means we can just have our sketch. This is 3.3. .3. So let's just have our sketch here. So we have got a resistor, we have got uh, an inductor, and we also have a capacitor. So that's what we have. And uh, don't forget it's AC. So just here, you can even indicate the sign for AC here. All right, but that's what we have. So the resistor, the inductor and the capacitor. So it's just a sketch, the second diagram. Yes, you can write the values, but that's the sketch that we're supposed to have uh, from this diagram that we have. So we can actually have one mark for that. So that's, uh, uh, that was the last person actually from uh, this paper having a total of 20 marks on uh, a C theory. So this is a lot of marks in exam that you can uh, just ignore. You have to study this topic and also with a C theory together, we can obtain a lot of marks. So that's what we had guys from uh, Maison African Motives working on industrial electronics and two till we meet again.